Hello there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alexis and today we will be talking about The Pathless Path by Paul Millard. Millard. <laughs> this is a book about forging your own way. Yes. The thing that you have in your mind and you believe it, you can create it. And Paul talks about a really interesting way of crafting life around what makes us come alive instead of just a paycheck. Do you feel like something's been missing from your life, even though you have a great job or a great default path, as he calls it? Do you feel stuck in your job? Do you feel that you could be doing way more with your time or you feel like you don't have the traveling that you want to do, the creative outlet that you want to do? Then perhaps this book is for you. First of all, this is a book about discovering who we are as we go along, discovering what our strengths are, what we can offer to the world, and we, what we can give back to it. And it's all about one point, first of all. Really being clear on what we want and what we value. What is it that we want out of life? For Paul, it was in this order, health, then relationships, then fun and creativity, and last, a career. What makes sense to you? What are your priorities? Do you want to spend time with your family, with your kids? Do you want to be married? Do you like a hobby that you want to do? And this is a tricky thing. You have to explore and perform experiments that you perhaps haven't done in the past. We have to experiment with different ways of living and not just being used to what people tell us it's okay or not okay to do. You can test hobbies, passions, music, art, singing, dancing, and note, not only for a paycheck. At least for now, perhaps, to really indulge in what it feels like to be present and not addicted to a default pathway of life. We tend to get so attached to our patterns, to our habits, that we identify with them. And I believe this process, this journey of the pathless path is about discovering who we are when we strip away all those habits. Now, of course, we need to research first thing. We need to redefine success in our own words. What has been your experience? What do you do when you're at your best? Is it working out, meditation, helping people, inspiring others, creating a product, uh, going out there and socializing with people? What is it that you value? And what metrics are you going to be used to measure this? Will it be a paycheck, money? Is that it? Then perhaps you are limiting yourself. Maybe you can say it's time or wealth or time spent with your family how healthy you are, how great you feel with uh, your health, your overall lifestyle. This is creating a life, not only a job or a career. That's why we have certain metrics that will help us value everything else more than just uh, money. Relationships, fun and creativity, health, and a career, of course. We want to build reputation over the long time, but we need to prioritize what is vital. Essentials versus... Uh, the essentials versus the non-essentials, as Greg McKeon says. Now, I would advise you to pause here for a second and really ask yourself, what challenges have I faced that I am really glad I overcame or a really big challenge in my life that I wasn't sure I was going to manage and then I did? That could give you some insight on what your path is or perhaps what you value the most when you lose yourself in the zone. Perhaps some of that may give you some insight. The second thing about this path is that it's about embracing uncertainty and the unknown. You are going off the default path and the default path has been for at least the last hundred years to get a stable job, get married and own a house perhaps. I think it may differ from culture to culture but you get the gist. It's basically uh, getting a corporate job and then staying there and climbing the corporate ladder. I mean, that that is a path, but it's the default path. And we're going on a pathless path to discover what we really want to do. It's about choosing the work that we just want to come back to do all the time. I think there is great intrinsic value in doing work that is itself a reward. So it's about looking for that. And we won't get there unless we experiment. And this, of course, there's this great poem from David Boyd that says, just be on yourself. That's where you have to be. 
And well, I think this is something that we can practice just beyond ourselves. We will feel a little uncomfortable, perhaps that we are dipping our toes in uncharted territory, but that is where we grow when we expand ourselves to do something that perhaps we didn't think we could. As uh, for me, at least, it has been switching and pursuing acting and then committing to a two-year full-time program. I experimented a little bit with it. Uh, I took some classes and I dipped my toes and I noticed that I was something that I really wanted to do and would regret if I didn't do it. So, yeah, I didn't start all blown out into a new degree. I started rather slowly and dipped my toes and really enjoyed it. So I, I knew that was something that I wanted to try and come back to at some point. And you are just taking steps. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So what is one step that you could try today? Perhaps you need, oh, well, first of all, you need time, to, you need to create time for the good stuff to arise. Like the Tao Te Ching says, there is a beauty in inaction, but you need to make that space for it. It's about creating circumstances that allow your great self to emerge, stripping away those habits. Perhaps it's about taking a day off or blocking two or three hours to really Think about what you want to do next and who you want to be perhaps in the next three years. Where would you like to be? What What do you enjoy? Look back in your calendar and look at all those events that you had and see which ones add to your life and which detract to your life. I think we're pretty good at that. You can, rule, you can truly notice what kind of events drain your energy and which ones just fuel you and you want to keep coming back to. Now, the third point is about creativity and play. I can tell you that play is so, so important in everything that we're doing and we tend to get so serious about work and think that everything has gotta be stern and professional and serious and white collar when usually the best things in life come when you're just playing around, experimenting and, and having fun. That's when spontaneous things arise just from this other part of our brain that is not so conditioned to just get things right. Because, you know, if you think about it, doing something out of the ordinary sometimes requires being eccentric. And this conditioned mind, the finite mind, doesn't really like to be wrong. Because we tend to think in black or white, right? This is either good or bad. So we tend to stay inside the zone, stay inside the ring and not take so many risks. But when we're playing, that's a different thing. I bet you have noticed that when you're playing sometimes you're like, wow, where did this idea come from? So cultivate that sense of play. You can start by doing fun things by themselves, not really having to get rewarded for it. Start drawing, start playing, choose the activity of play that you are most drawn to. And then, yeah, experience that state of play and then try to be aware when you're doing the work. What is it that you are experimenting with? And how can I bring some fun in here, be it with other people, by myself. I, in my acting classes, I noticed that uh, trying to get the text right and being so aware of where the scene needs to go just makes me rigid and fragile and not spontaneous. And I don't listen to my acting partner. So maybe the same thing happens in your business or your coaching session. If you are too ingrained in trying to control things, you won't be there to react spontaneously to what the moment is. You won't be there to to create in the moment. And that's and that's key. You you need to be flexible and trust this intuitive side of us or nurture that intuitive side and trust that the skills will be there when you need them. Of course, you are training that and you are experimenting, but this the state will not arise by itself. Rather, it's a it's a cultivation. It's a practice that you can use and you can you can foster it through meditation and then be aware of it uh, as long as you're and you can be aware of it throughout your day. And the last of all, I think, find a tribe, find people that are aligned with your way of thinking that know that there is something else beyond the default path that want to explore other interests and not just having that fixed job for a certain amount of time whatever it is you need friends that inspire you to dream higher because we fall down and it is easier to get back up when someone's there right next to you than just being by yourself and then letting 
you know that story about the frog. Well, supposedly, if you have a frog in a pot and you instantly raise the temperature really dramatically, of course, it will jump out. But if you steadily raise it little by little over a long span of time, the frog won't notice because the stimulus isn't high enough to to disturb it and make it jump all of a sudden. So it starts to acclimatize, to, to get used to the temperature little by little. So we will develop coping mechanisms and we will learn to rationalize our discomfort and stay there forever. Sometimes we need someone to shake us and tell us, okay, what are you doing? Is this really what you want? Yeah, so is this what you want? If you like this video, I will have a couple more stuff over here exploring.